normally on a day like today, you would just hear bird song up here. But if you listen closely in the distance, you can hear the roar of motorbikes. And that's because it is the middle of the TT races. So the Isle of Man gets completely taken over by motorcycles from around the world. Our roads are shut down for high-speed motorcycle races. It is a general disruption to ordinary day-to-day -day life, but people on the Isle of Man for the most part love it. And actually this coming Friday is a public holiday, so everyone has the day off to see the senior race. So it is a, it's a fantastic way to see the island, I think, if you're a motorbike fan but also life goes on. And so I'm up here at the allotment and there's no one else up here as per usual. And since it's been so long, I think April was my last allotment tour. What I'd like to do is show you around the allotment garden today. I'll show you what's growing. It's been a tough year so far. It's been really hit or miss with the weather. It's been wet, it's been windy, it's been sunny then again and it's been basically a late start, but things are starting to come on and it's lush and green and a nice respite from all the hectic racing and beer guzzling bikers around the Isle of Man. So come on, let's go have a, a look at the allotment. And uh, I think we should have a walk around the allotment site as well, like I usually do and see what's growing on the other plots. <laughs> So bright and sunny today, the plants really need it. And you can see that the raspberries are really starting to put on some height. And I've just put in this new support around them. So I've, I've banged in some new posts around the edges and then have connected some bamboo canes in between just to hold them all in place. And I'll be putting some string and some other supports in there as time goes on. But something like this is, is pretty much all you really need or all I really need for my raspberries. The strawberries, on the other hand, so just down there, they are starting to come on and I've noticed some birds pecking at them. That's likely not birds. This is probably slug damage. And with all these strawberries starting to come out, I need to get these lifted up off the ground and it's just been so wet and soggy. I've not had a chance to do it yet. So the jobs I need to do for the strawberry bed are to put some material underneath the berries to lift them up off the ground. And that can be straw or it can be egg crates like egg cartons. And then I also need to net this as well. One thing that I love about the Isle of Man is that it's always green all year round. Absolutely love it. I love my lovely greens. <laughs> and I want to show you something new in the pond as well. I've been battling with blanket weed in this pond and I've been pulling it out and I'm going to continue pulling it out. But one thing that blanket weed and other algae does is it deprives the water of oxygen. So I bought this little solar powered fountain and it's been going for about a week now, maybe a little bit more than a week, and it's doing great. I have it floating in a plastic colander and there's some corks around the sides there just to keep it afloat. And the idea is that as the water comes up, it'll capture oxygen from the air and bring it down into the water. The reason that my pond is getting so congested with pond weed is that all the trees around here and also my plants, these native flag irises, the herbs that are around here, also the runoff from the wildlife patch, all of those nutrients are getting into the water and it's providing food for the algae to survive. So my battle plan right now is to continue pulling it all out manually and also taking out any excess leaves and, and foliage that's falling in. You can see there's some flower blossoms and leaves in the back there. 
and then also allow this fountain to do its job. And I'll let you know how it goes throughout the summer, but if you're interested in getting one of these guys for yourself, I'll leave a link in the video description. Most people don't have to net their potatoes, but here at our site, we have to. And that's because we have pheasants that live in the area and they will scratch and dig at the soil, dig up the potatoes and eat them. But I've just noticed that on the far right, my uh, Apache potatoes are starting to blossom. I can see the very first one. So that's a second early here on the far right. And then there's two rows of first earlies here in the center. And these will be ready by the end of the month, hopefully, at least the first earlies. Where the corn and the beans are was where the brassicas were growing last year. So the cabbages, the purple sprouting broccoli, and the Brussels sprouts. This year, I've moved them down a bed. And closest to us, there's three rows of cabbage, and that's the same variety that I grew last year. It's golden acre. And then to the right of them, there's a couple of types of Brussels sprouts. So I'm growing the same purple one, and that variety is called Red Bull. And it's right there, so there's three of them. And then there's a green one there. And it's kind of in between rows. We'll see how it does. I ran out of space. To the right, these are the kaolettes. And those are seeds that I got from Thompson and Morgan as part of my seed haul from them. And then on the right here, this is a type of heritage variety kale from the Netherlands. And it's quite rare. It's from the Real Seed Company. And the name is escaping me at the moment. At the base of every one of the plants, there's a piece of cardboard. And this is a collar, and it's to stop the cabbage root fly. And it'll hang around for a while, long enough. And if any of the cabbage root flies tries to lay their eggs on the ground, it'll actually be laid on the cardboard where it will dry up. And hopefully the eggs will not become a problem. I've not put a whole lot of other veg out, so root veg or greens just yet, but just under this netting, I have some beetroot, kohlrabi, coriander, so that's cilantro just there. And just there in the distance are some leeks. Aside from those, I also have some greens just underneath this mesh. So I've got some mixed lettuces here next to a new type of calendula flower that I'm growing some newly planted herbs in the center. And then over there in the distance, that is a type of lettuce called Sioux that I quite like. Down at the base of my plot are the thornless blackberries and I've been tying in the new canes. And the canes from last year have been blossoming and they're starting to form fruit. You can see there in the center. This is one of my favorite perennial crops. I just absolutely love the berries. There's no thorns to contend with. They grow really well on a trellis and they just keep producing. They're just so low maintenance. All of those big yellow flowers right there, that is from two of my purple sprouting broccoli plants. And I've just let the last of the spears go to flower. I think most people are unaware that broccoli and purple sprouting broccoli are just flower buds. And those little points, they open up into these guys and then more so, more so. And finally, they blossom into these yellow flowers that bees absolutely love. I can hear them humming all over these flowers here. And that's the reason that I've let them go to seed. There's gonna be a lot of lavender this year. Although this is not going to be blooming for probably another month, month and a half. But I've got an entire row of English lavender along here that I'm hoping to build into a hedge over time. But I've also put in some new lavender. So this is a variety that I've never seen before. And it's actually not a true English lavender. It's a hybrid, so it's English lavender mixed with 
a Portuguese variety. And then over here, I have another type of lavender. And this is a dwarf type. And it's flowering very early. It's so beautiful. So it stays really low to the ground. And these beautiful blue blossoms. I've kept the herb bed. I, I know earlier in the year I was thinking about maybe using this for something else, but you know what? It's doing so well. Look at all of these overwintered calendula flowers. I've been picking loads of them and drying them out. So these plants, they overwintered. All of those down in the center, so it, all those little green leaves all along there, those are seedlings from last year's calendula flowers and I'm letting them grow up. And I imagine towards the middle of the summer, this will just be a mass of orange flowers again. You might be wondering what is inside this? Well, I've put some fleece over these chamomile flowers. Do you see them all in there? These are all from self-seeded plants that I found and replanted from one of my pathways. And I've put the fleece around them just to protect them and to encourage them to grow and to blossom early. We've had a good look to see what's growing here on my plot. So now let's have a look around the site and see what else people are growing. We have quite a few vacant plots at the moment, and so I've been really trying to push that out on Facebook to try to get some people in. Fortunately, there's a few people wanting to view plots this weekend, so I'll be meeting up with them. A really nice crop of potatoes on this plot. They're not netted, but they don't look damaged from pheasants. The netting is a lot more important early on in the season for us because in, say, March, even late February, there's very little for pheasants to eat up here. So they will target potatoes, dig them up, and they are a real nuisance here. We've got some raspberries back here behind this netting and plenty of poppies. So this is the California poppies. I think that this year is gonna be a really good year for soft fruit. I just keep on seeing so many berries on everyone's bushes. Look at all of these raspberries starting to form. The bees are loving all the blossoms. That's the thing about our allotment site is that we get a lot of food out of it ourselves, but at the same time, it feeds a lot of the local wildlife as well, whether we like it or not. I always love coming and having a look at this particular plot. They've got it really built up here. Always have something interesting growing. Some really good looking onions down here. Also some foxgloves up there. I presume that those are wild types that have self-seeded. And then have a look at this. What a gorgeous globe artichoke. Globe artichokes grow really well here. They're really fuss free and they actually bloom these beautiful purple flowers if you allow them to flower and bumblebees in particular love them. If you don't have space for a garden, a lot of veg and fruit will grow in containers. And this is a, looks like a fishing box, which we have quite a lot of here on the island. They wash up on the shore, often from fishing ships and strawberries planted inside, easy and also transportable. Look at the handles on the side. If your garden is on a slope, it looks quite cute if you create little beds that go down with the slope. They look like slides, don't they? And also, again, there's well-maintained pathways in between, which means that you can really focus on work inside the beds rather than having to weed where you're walking. Some nice lavender down there. This plot holder has the right idea with their strawberries. So they've got some hay or straw just down below the berries and they have them netted against birds. I need to get on top of mine. Having a pond in your garden or your allotment is always a good idea. They really attract bees who come down to the edge and, and have a drink. 
hedgehogs can also get a drink and other wildlife. And it's just so nice having a little water feature right next to where you're sitting and enjoying the garden. Over the years, we've really learned what grows well here on our site and the importance of growing things like soft fruit, which not only gives a crop, but it creates a windbreak as well and creates space for us to grow more tender veg like squash. Things are really starting to pick up here at the Laxey allotment. Give it another month and there's going to be so much veg coming out of these beds. There's the tiniest little snail just right here at the edge of the colander. There's just so much life in this little pond. Tadpoles, little snails, everything is just drawn here to this water source. And if you are interested in putting one into your garden, just do it. You won't regret it, I promise you. And as for the solar powered fountain, I'll put a link in the video description. As I said before, I'm going to give some updates over the summer to see how it does. But right now I'm really, really happy with it. So it's a good solution for gardens that don't have power or if you're out in the countryside or an allotment as well. And I can see all these little bubbles forming in the water. So hopefully that means that it's getting oxygenated. Well, as for the allotment, there's a lot growing, a lot more than I thought I would be able to show you at the beginning of this video. And if this good weather continues, then we're going to have a lot more to show you in a month's time. So thank you so much for having a walk around the allotment. Leave me your questions and comments down below, and I will see you next time for the next video here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now.